think of my dress. My prince is taking me to a ball. I can't wait. Unfortunately, as of many things, it has been postponed. But since you're here, why don't we have story time? <sighs> there we go. You know, I really do love dressing up. It makes me feel like Cinderella. In fact, I think I'll keep the cape. So speaking of Cinderella, today's story is a special retelling of Cinderella. So let's head downstairs to our story time space and get started. Here we are, back in the parlor. So today's story is called The Rough Face Girl. It's a special Native American retelling of Cinderella. It's got all the themes that you're used to, such as the Wicked Stepsisters, and of course, the Fairy Godmother of Sorts. So why don't we get started? The Rough Face Girl by Race Martin, illustrated by David Shannon. Once, long ago, there was a village by the shores of Lake Ontario. Off from the other wigwams of this village stood one great, huge wigwam. Painted on its sides were pictures of the sun, moon, stars, plants, trees, and animals. And inside this wigwam, there was said to live a very great, rich, powerful, and supposedly handsome, invisible being. However, no one could see him except his sister who lived there too. Many women wanted to marry this invisible being, but his sister said, only the one who can see him can marry him. Now in this village, there lived a poor man who had three daughters. The two older daughters were cruel and hard-hearted and they made their youngest sister sit by the fire and the feed the flames. When the burning branches popped, the sparks fell on her. In time, her hands became burnt and scarred. Her arms too became rough and scarred. Even her face was marked by the fire and her beautiful long black hair hung ragged and charred. And those two older sisters laughed at her saying, ha, you're ugly, you rough faced girl and they made her life very lonely and miserable indeed. One day, these two older sisters went to their father and said, Father, give us some necklaces. Give us some new buckskin dresses. Give us some pretty beaded moccasins. We're going to marry the invisible being. So their father gave them these things. Dressed in their finest, these two girls marched through the village. All the people pointed and stared. Look at those beautiful girls, they said. Surely they will marry the invisible being. And if those two girls were proud and hard hearted before, they were even prouder now. They walked haughtily through the village. At last, they came to the wigwam of the invisible being. And there was his sister waiting. Why have you come? Why have you come? She asked. We want to marry the invisible being, they answered. That's why we're here. If you want to marry my brother, she replied, you have to have seen him. Tell me, have you seen the invisible being? Of course we've seen him, they insisted. Can't you see how pretty we are? Can't you see the beautiful clothes we wear? Oh yes, anyone can tell we've truly seen the invisible being. All right, she said quietly. If you think you've seen him, then tell me. What's his bow made of? And suddenly her voice was swift as lightning and strong as thunder. His b bow? They stammered in surprise. His uh, bow. We know, we know. But turning desperately to one another, they whispered, what shall we say? Let's say it's the oak tree. So they said, it's the great oak tree. No, said the sister of the invisible being. No, 
Oh, she saw at once how they lied. Tell me, she continued, if you think you've seen my brother, the invisible being, then what's the runner of his sled made of? Ah, uh, we know, we know, cried the two sisters. But whispering feverishly again, they wondered, what shall we say? What shall we say? Let's say it's the green willow branch. No, said the sister when she heard. No, you have not seen my brother. Now go home. Just test us fairly, they exclaimed. We've seen him. Just don't ask these silly questions. All right, said the sister of the invisible being. Come with me. And she took them back to the great wigwam and sat them in the seats furthest from the entrance, the guests' seats. Soon they heard footsteps coming along the path. Then something stepped inside. Though they heard breathing, the two sisters still couldn't see a thing. Suddenly, a great bow and a beaded quiver of arrows appeared in the air and were set down. But though the two sisters sat there, their eyes wide, all through that night, they never saw a thing more. And in the morning, they had to go home, ashamed. The next day, the rough-faced girl went to her father and said, Father, may I please have some beads? May I please have a new buckskin dress and some pretty moccasins? I am going to marry the invisible being, for wherever I look, I see his face. But her father sighed, Daughter, I'm sorry, I have no beads left for you. Only some little broken shells. I have no buckskin dress. And as for moccasins, all I have left are my own old, worn, cracked, and stretched out pair from last year. And they're much too big. But she said, whatever you can spare, I can use. And he gave her these things. Then she found dried weeds. <sighs> weeds. Then she found dried reeds, and taking the little broken shells, she strung a necklace. She stripped birch bark from the dead trees and made a cap, a dress, and leggings. Then, with a sharp piece of bone, she carved in the bark pictures of the sun, moon, stars, plants, trees, and animals. She went down to the lake shore and soaked the moccasins in the water until they grew soft. Then she molded them to her feet, but they were still too big and they flap, flap, flapped like a duck's feet as she walked. Then all of the people came out of their wigwams. They pointed and stared. Look at that ugly girl, they laughed. Look at her strange clothes. Hey, 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 go home, you ugly girl. You'll never marry the invisible being. But the rough-faced girl had faith in herself, and she had courage. She didn't turn back. She just kept walking right through the village. As she walked, she saw the great beauty of the earth and the sky spreading before her. And truly, she alone, of all in that village, saw in these things the sweet yet awesome face of the invisible being. At last, she came to the lake shore, just as the sun was sinking behind the hills, and the many stars came glittering out like a fiery veil in the darkening sky overhead. And there, standing by the water's edge, was the sister of the invisible being, waiting. Now, the sister of the invisible being was a wise woman. When she looked at you, she didn't just see your face or your hair or clothes. No, when she looked at you, she would look you right in the eyes and she could see all the way down to your heart. And she could tell if you had a good, kind heart or a cold, hard and cruel one. And when she looked at the rough faced girl, she saw at once that though her skin was scarred, her hair burnt, her clothes strange, she had a beautiful, kind heart. And so 
she welcomed her dearly, saying, Ah, oh, my sister, why have you come? And the rough-faced girl replied, I have come to marry the invisible being. Ah, said the sister, very gently now, if you want to marry him, you have to have seen him. Tell me, have you seen my brother, the invisible being? And the rough-faced girl said, yes. All right then, said the sister. If you have seen him, tell me, what's his bow made of? And the rough-faced girl said, his bow? Why, it's the great curve of the rainbow. Ah, exclaimed the sister in excitement. Tell me, she asked, if you have seen my brother, the invisible being, what's the runner of his sled made of? And the rough faced girl looking up into the night sky said, the runner of his sled? Why, it is the spirit road, the Milky Way of stars that spreads across the skies. Ah, oh, cried the sister in wonder and delight. You have seen him. Come with me. And taking the rough-faced girl by the hand, she led her back to the great wigwam and sat her in the seat next to the entrance, the wife's seat. Then they heard footsteps coming along the path, closer and closer. The entrance flap of the wigwam lifted up and in stepped the invisible being. And when he saw her sitting there, he said, At last, we have been found out. Then, smiling kindly, he added, And oh, my sister, but she is beautiful. And his sister said, Yes. The sister of the invisible being then gave the rough-faced girl the finest of buckskin robes and a necklace of perfect shells. Now bathe in the lake and dress in these. So the rough-faced girl bathed in the waters of the lake. Suddenly, all the scars vanished from her body. Her skin grew smooth again and her beautiful black hair grew in long and glossy as a raven's wing. Now anyone could see that she was indeed beautiful. But the invisible being and his sister had seen that from the start. Then at last, the rough-faced girl and the invisible being were married. They lived together in great gladness and were never parted. The end. This is one of my favorite versions of Cinderella because the rough-faced girl just takes so much of her destiny into her own hands. And so many Cinderella stories, I feel like Cinderella always gets relegated to some seat by the fire. But in this one, the rough-faced girl says she is going to go and marry the invisible being. In this story, her prince. And there she goes and she finds him. And she is able to prove that she has seen the invisible being. And then her fairy godmother, the invisible being's sister, helps transform her into the beauty that she always was inside not just what was on the outside, like what the stepsisters thought of themselves. So I hope you enjoyed this week's story and enjoyed the little bit of dress up with me. Don't be afraid to dress up yourself. Everybody needs to have fun and dressing up is fun no matter how old you are. If you enjoyed today's story time, get with your parents and go to nchmuseum.org and sign up for our email list. That way you can make sure you stay up to date with everything that's going on here at the Neil Cochran House Museum. And while you're at it, make sure you go and like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can make sure you never miss an episode of Storytime. And with that, I am going to put up my hood so I can head out. And I'll see you next time, Storytimers.